Hi, George Diamond here again. Uh, we're continuing our flipped classroom video uh, video presentations here. Uh, this is the second video we, that we uh, that I've done involving continuity. Uh, now, what I want to do with this video is look at a couple examples of some some problems, sort of like what we'll, we'll be looking at at our homework. Okay, how can you tell whether a function is continuous or not? All right, so so some stuff like this. Uh, the previous video, we looked at some the properties and things like that. Uh, so here we want to take a look at some, uh, just a, a couple problems as to uh, how to determine whether it's continuous or not. Right, now what we have here is that we're going to find the x values at which f is not continuous. Now we're just going to get the x values only. Now our first problem is that our function, we got f of x equals x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. Now this is a typical rational function. Now if the function is not continuous, this type of function, basically you've got two, uh, there's two possibilities. Either, either the graph has a hole in it. Now if it's got a hole, we can get rid of it. But in any event, that would be an x value in which it would not be continuous. Uh, or the graph could have a vertical asymptote. Now, you can't get rid of a vertical asymptote. Now the third possibility is the graph has a hole and a vertical asymptote. So we'll see what this particular problem uh, problem has. Now, first of all, to see if it has a hole, we got to factor it, and uh, and then from there you can recognize the hole. So let's take a look at the factorization of this rational expression. Now, to start off, x minus one won't factor. So we're just going to bring the x minus one on over. Now let's factor x squared plus x minus two. This is just a simple trinomial. When we start our parentheses, it should factor as two binomial factors. The x squared will factor as x times x. And the see now the two will only factor as two times one. So let's put we'll put the two here and the one there. Now remember, in a tri, in a simple trinomial like this, the middle term tells you the sign of the largest number. So the larger number, uh, the middle term is positive, so that means the two would have to be plus, and the one would have to be minus. All right. So we've got uh, we've got we've got the uh, uh, the, the function uh, in factor form. Now first, let's check for holes. Now do you see the x minus one in the numerator and the x minus one in the denominator? Now that indicates a hole. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the hole out. So let's cross out the x minus ones. So we've got a hole at x equal x equal 1. So this is x minus 1, so the whole would be at x equal 1. Okay. Now, notice what's left. What's left, we have 1 over x plus 2. So we still have the remaining function as a rational, rational expression again, rational function. You have 1 over x plus 2. Now, x plus 2 indicates a vertical asymptote. So look at this. This particular problem has a hole and a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote. Okay, yeah. x plus 2 equals 0, or x equals negative 2. So we got a vertical asymptote at negative 2. You cannot remove. We have a hole at x equal 1 that we can remove. So there are two x values in which this particular problem is not continuous. It's not continuous at x equal 1 or at x equal negative 2. Let's try another example. There we go. Okay, let's try this problem here. Now, are there any discontinuities on in this particular problem? Like I said, when we get it, when we get into class and we start working on our homework, you know, there'll be some functions like this in which we're going to ask you to uh, determine whether or not there are any discontinuities or not. Now, once again, I'm just looking for the x values here at which this particular fun function would not be continuous. Uh, so now, to be continuous, now there, there's one possible discontinuity here that I notice. The bottom of the fraction, you got x minus 3. So a possible discontinuity at x equal positive 3. So the bottom of the fraction is negative 3. If, if x is 3, you have 3 minus 3, which is 0. So there could be a hole or something there. Uh, so this, we say it's a possible discontinuity. Now, we don't know for sure if it is or not. But uh, that's, that's where we need to check. So I'll tell you what let's do. If, it, if this particular function, if it would not be continuous at x equal 3, 
then the left-hand limit will not equal the right-hand limit, or it has to equal the, le the left-hand limit has to equal the right-hand limit, which has to equal the function at three. So three things got to be equal. So let's start off by checking the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit first. Now come up on the left. This is an absolute value function. So we're going to do the limit as x approaches three from. We'll do from the left-hand direction first. So I'll put us a put the little negative three here, right? So we we'll do the left-hand limit. So the limit as x approaches three from the left. And let's see, this will be, so uh, from the left-hand direction, we're going to rewrite, rewrite our, our absolute value of x minus 3 over x minus 3. So this will be the left-hand side. Now, what happens with this particular, with this particular function, uh, whenever you drop the absolute value and write it from the left-hand direction is uh, the opposite of x minus 3, the x minus 3s cancel out to 1. And that'll give us negative 1 over positive 1, which is negative 1. So the left-hand limit on this particular function is going to be negative 1. Now let's try the function from the right-hand direction. Now the, the right-hand limit, okay, this will be the limit as x approaches 3 from the right-hand direction. Now the app to, to, to write the right-hand part of the absolute value would simply be x minus 3 over x minus 3. So be plus in front of your parentheses there. Now what happens is when you take the, the right-hand limit, the x minus 3's cancel out the positive 1. Right? Now, now notice now the function also, uh, now notice as you look at the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, the left-hand limit as x approaches 3 from the left is negative 1. The right-hand limit is positive 1. Those are different. So let's say the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, these are not equal. So we can say that this function is, is discontinuous at x equal 3. So we can go ahead and say that there is a discontinuity at x equal 3, and you can, you can see that illustrated by your two. Your left-hand limit has to equal your, your right-hand limit. Now, if these two had been equal to each other, then we would have had to try the function value at 3 also to make sure that all three are equal. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, let's try another absolute value function. Absolute value functions tend to get students, I guess, more trouble than a lot of other types of functions, or at least it's been my experience that my students have had trouble with them. So, so I'm going to do a couple examples here. Now, we got f of x equals the absolute value of x squared plus 4x times the quantity x plus 2 over x plus 4. Now, first thing you want to know is we have a possible discontinuity at x equal negative 4. Now, let's see. Let's see if it's actually a discontinuity. So it could be a hole or whatever. Okay, we're going to check it. So once again, just like the problem before, okay, we need to see if the left-hand limit and the right-hand limits are equal. And uh, if they are, then, uh, uh, then we got to check the function value at negative 4 also. So well, first of all, let's go from the left-hand direction. We're going to do the limit as x approaches negative 4. Now from the left-hand direction, this will be the opposite of x squared plus 4x times x plus 2 over x plus 4, all right? Now, let's see, we're going to simplify this. Now, first thing I notice inside our parentheses here, x squared plus 4x, we have a, a common factor of x. So let's factor the x off. Okay, this gives us negative x times x plus 4 times x plus 2 divided by x plus 4, okay? Now, do you see the x plus 4 on top of the bottom? Okay, that's the whole. So you got x plus 4 in your numerator, x plus 4 in your denominator, that's a whole. So, uh, so as we find our limit now, so to calculate our limit, I want to cross these out, and then let's use direct substitution. Let's substitute negative 4 in for x into the remaining expression. So that'll give us negative 4 times negative 4 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. So we'll go ahead and substitute. Actually, this would be, uh, the x is already negative. Here it is. That will make this a positive 4. And substituting negative 4 in for x is be negative 2 and positive 4, which would give us a, a negative 8. All right, so, uh, the, uh, so the left-hand limit here should be negative 8. Let's try the right-hand limit. Now, the right-hand limit would be the limit as x approaches negative 4. Now, let's see, this is the left-hand limit. This is the left-hand limit. 
this would be the right hand limit. So it'd be negative four. There's a little plus sign after the negative uh, after the negative four to indicate that it's the right hand limit. Now, once again, that uh, as we simplify this, the dropping the absolute value here would be x squared plus four x times x plus two. Okay, over x plus four. Factoring x off this time would give us x times x plus 4 times x plus 2. We've got x plus 4 in the denominator. Now the x plus 4s will cancel. Now let's substitute negative 4 in for x this time will give us negative 4 times negative 4 plus 2. Now negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 times negative 4 gives us positive 8. Now you can see the left hand limit was negative 8. The right hand limit was positive 8 left-hand limit and the right-hand limits are different. So that indicates that negative 4 is a discontinuity. Right? You can tell that by checking, their, uh, checking the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. There's a discontinuity because the left-hand limits and the right-hand limits are different.